That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So today's Daily Dose of Stupid, really it's the totality of our education system right now. There's so much stupid to go around in that, and, and the biggest new thing about that is the SAT. So what the SATs have done is they have added a new category that they're going to test students on. And what that is is your victimhood score. And I promise I'm not making this up. This is a real news story. I know it seems like something that would you would see on your crazy uncle's Facebook page that the half the words are misspelled and it's obviously something that a fake news site came up with. But no, I promise this is real. I checked into it. The SATs now are going to give victimhood status to compensate certain students that underperform. And there's a couple of reasons why this is a Really, really horrible idea. First of all, the idea that you ought to suggest, because keep in mind, the SAT is not like the ACT. The SAT does not measure how hard you work. It measures how smart you are. The ACT measures both. It studies your actual knowledge of the subjects, and it, it also uh, will, of course, that will be included in that as your actual intellect. But the SAT is really supposed to just measure your potential, the ability that you have to, to go further, the ability you have to take in new information and apply it, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind when we're going through this. What the SAT now is doing is they're saying that we're going to essentially give a handicap, like in golf, for people that are in low-income areas or have other kind of stipulations on their on them like crime rates in their neighborhoods that kind of thing there's a couple of big problems with that first of all i don't see if it, i don't know that they couldn't lie on that so that's the first big thing that all you would have to do is lie about the level of crime in the place that you're from the level of income at the school that you attend to and presumably Again, this is just based on the information that I got from the news story that I read. It wouldn't be very difficult to lie about that stuff. And then you could get extra points on the SAT that you did not earn. And I'm not even necessarily talking about huge lies. You could tweak it just a little bit to get underneath that threshold on your victimhood score or over that threshold for your victimhood score. However they scale it, I don't know exactly whether... Zero is more victimized or 100 is more victimized. But regardless, they're trying to make victimhood into a quantifiable entity here where they can say, okay, this kid had several disadvantages when it came to his education. So we're going to give him a little boost on his SAT. And this kid, well, he's super privileged. So we're actually going to knock his score down a little bit. It is, you know, that old conservative uh, argument that we've been using for years about when you talk about redistribution of wealth, well, how would you feel if you were in a class and we just redistributed the score so everybody had the same score? That's what they're trying to do now. It's not exactly the same because they're not trying to level everybody's off to be exactly the same, but what they are doing is essentially redistribution of wealth when it comes to test scores. They're saying that this kid is a victim so we're going to give him a boost, and this kid is privileged, so we're not going to consider him for a boost in a score or whatever. So they're literally doing a redistribution of wealth only with test scores now. That silly, goofy old scenario that we've used, it's an effective one, and it does prove our point, but that goofy scenario that we used as a hypothetical, as something to, to be so ridiculous that people would understand why redistribution of wealth is a stupid concept, they're actually doing even that now. They're using the ridiculous scenario that we've been using for years to show people how ridiculous redistribution of wealth is, except they're doing the goofy scenario. I, you can't make this junk up. I mean, they just, they constantly are trying to find new ways to do stupid things. And what's really problematic about this is how does this apply? In other words, what are the unintended consequences that result from this? Are you going to have a minority kid that gets a better SAT score than he, that he deserved 
actually minority, as I understand, doesn't even play into this. It's about demographics and about how much money your parents make. And, and I think that race actually isn't encountered in this, which is good. And it's kind of surprising, honestly, that if they were going to do this, they wouldn't include that. But nonetheless. So that that kid that doesn't do as well on his SATs, but gets a boost in his score because of his victimhood. What happens when he gets to college? What happens when he gets into a college that is more rigorous than it sh than he should have been because he got an inflated score. And so now he's in an academic environment that is more rigorous than he's used to and really more rigorous than he can handle. Because at the end of the day, isn't that really what an SAT score is? It is a way for a university to judge, okay, this person can handle it here. He will be able to succeed here. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and allow him to come into our institution because we believe he is somebody that can make it all the way to graduation. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen in every case, but that's the reason that universities use those entrance parameters so they can determine who is likely to go on and, and be successful in their university and who is not. If they've got a kid who his score is not really what his score was, if it's actually inflated, then wouldn't that mean that he could get into schools that would be above his academic level? And the same thing for the, the opposite direction. If all of a sudden you have a pool of people and there are now an awful lot more people that have a higher score than they did last year, then the kid that might be more deserving of it, the kid that might actually need to be in that university because it's more conducive to his learning, in other words, he's more at the level that that university expects him to be at, but he doesn't get in because the crowd, the, the field is now flooded with more applicants that have a score as good as him, even though he earned his score and a lot of the others didn't. Well, then that hurts the universities as well. So maybe the solution, maybe the solution by the left and what they're thinking about is, okay, well, now what we should do is we should just, for those people that have a high victim score, we just relax the standards in college. Well, how far does that go? Do you relax the standards in graduate school? Do you relax the standards in, you know, for people that are trying to get their doctorate? What if this is a kid that just happens to have a high victimhood score and wants to go to medical school? I mean, are we really going to look at that kid and go like, hmm, well, your patient would have died on this cadaver that you're practicing on, but you do have a high victimhood score, so we're going to go ahead and give you your doctorate anyway. There you are. Congratulations. You're an MD now. We can't live in this world where we pretend that just because somebody has had obstacles in their path that we ought to just act as though those obstacles give them an excuse to underperform. Because at a certain point, it's not going to matter whether they're a victim or not. Do you really want to... Let's take something other than being a doctor. Do you really want to, if you're involved in a legal case where the custody of your children is a possibility that it could be taken away from you, do you really want to have a lawyer that was allowed to pass law school because he had a rough childhood? Are you really comfortable with putting your fate in that person's hands? What about a bridge? Do you really want to drive across a bridge of an engineering student that only got his engineering degree because he lived in a rough neighborhood? I mean, it, it's just absolute insanity that we are trying to throw merit out the window. In fact, there were people on the left, I remember earlier this week, that were saying that the word merit or the concept of merit is racist. I believe that was Nancy Pelosi talking about immigration. They're saying we shouldn't be going to a merit-based system because what we're doing then is we're saying family doesn't have any merit. We're not saying family doesn't have any merit. But what we are saying is that merit should count, like the things that you've accomplished in life, your competence, your ability to contribute to society, that should at least be a factor, shouldn't it? We should at least consider that. The left wants to live in this world where everybody gets the same thing where all the results are the same, whether you're smart enough or not, you get a college diploma and you get a college diploma and you get a college diploma. Everybody gets a college diploma. But when you live in a world that celebrates mediocrity, you'll, finally, you'll eventually find yourself with a lot more mediocre people because the ones that work really hard 
they realize they can't get ahead because now the deck is actually stacked against them. If it's no longer going if the system is no longer going to recognize their merit, if it's no longer going to recognize their hard work, then why work hard? If the kid that has a victimhood degree is getting the same pay as you, even though you had to work a lot harder and, and be smarter than that other kid, then why are you going to actually study and do what you're supposed to do? You can't survive very long in a system that refuses to acknowledge and reward those that are genuinely good at what they do and celebrate the ones that are not. That's just the way it is. You'll soon find yourself with way more mediocre people than you will dynamic people that actually want to do a good job. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.